Thank you, Hugh Hewitt. I am Kurt Schlichter, retired United States Army Colonel, senior columnist at Town Hall. We are tracking all aspects of the conflict with Iran. We are waiting for President Trump to address the nation. Let's get Jim Hansen, my pal, who is president of the Security Studies Group in here. Jim, how are you doing? Doing great, Kurt. What do we know, or what do you know, because you're you're pretty connected, what do you know that we aren't hearing in the media? Well, I, I think before we jump off, I think you're correct that President Trump can take this as a win. Um, he can even look at the fact that immediately after these strikes happened, Zarif came up in a tweet saying, okay, okay, we, you know, we basically, we did what we had to do, you know, we made our people happy, please don't hit us anymore. This is us concluding our, you know, face-saving gesture. And I think that means a lot for them to basically be begging us not to squash them flat. And I think Trump will rightly go ahead and say he pushed them out of the way and we can move on. Now, you're so a, that's important. Now, Jim, you're a, uh, a retired Green Beret. For those uh, those folks listening who weren't in the military, can you give us an idea of the capabilities the United States has in the Middle East that can be arrayed against Iran right now without, of course, disclosing anything classified or inappropriate? Well, the nice thing we have is the ability to protect our own forces and to hit anything that they have. You know, President Trump noted that he had a, a list of 52 targets to match the 52 hostages they took after the revolution in 79. Uh, that's massive, and, and they can't defend against that. They have no air defenses that can stop us. They have no ability to stop Tomahawk missiles. You know, we can hit any of their proxy bases. They've got uh, their IRGC and Quds Force guys, which Soleimani commanded, are still scattered across the Middle East in Iraq, in Syria, in Lebanon, and in Yemen. And right now, we cut the head off that snake. You know, Soleimani, for as big a, a disgraceful, treacherous terrorist he was, he was good at it. All right, we have to give respect for his ability to be a horrible terrorist. Now he's gone, and the new guy is not that good. He doesn't have the relationships. So there's a whole bunch of things we could do to disrupt their proxy operations. Uh, we could take out their Navy in a good afternoon's work and make sure they could never harass shipping again. So there's, there's so many things we can do. Now, granted, they have ways to hit us back. But in the end, any time we want to up the ante, much more of their stuff goes up in smoke. Well, I think I think you put your finger on an important issue with Suleimani. Okay, this is a guy who, uh, and I believe his deputy has been his deputy for twenty years. In what third world dictatorship does a uh, a senior executive hire a deputy who's as competent or more competent than him? <laughs> Right? Never, because right? Because they end up dying, and the guy uh, moves up the food chain. You always have a lackey as your number two who carries out your dirty work, but is not a real ambitious quality dude. So you're exactly right. Well, I'm looking at what happened here, and uh, it does. I believe that the Iranians had the technical capability to strike and kill Americans, to hit barracks, to hit command posts to hit places where our troops physically were on those bases. They, they obviously know the bases inside out. You know, they, they've certainly, over the last uh, 20 years, have been able to infiltrate and know where every building is and know where the Americans are. I, my gut tells me, now I'm not putting incompetence off the table, but my gut tells me <laughs> they were not trying to to run up the score on Americans. They knew that was a red line. They knew that would get a response. What do you think? 100% agree. I think the choice of ballistic missiles says that. First of all, their missiles suck. You know, I mean, that's a, that's a given. They, their guidance systems are not accurate enough. You know, everybody assumes a, a guided ballistic missile attack like we would do, in which case we could pick which seat of the car we wanted to hit. And did. Uh, is, and did. <laughs> Right, is, is the way those guys could operate. They're things, they lob them at a target, and it lands somewhere in the general vicinity. Now, it was risky for them to try and do that because they could have accidentally, more than on purpose, hit something. But like you said, if they wanted to take out a large number of Americans, that's not how they would have done it. And they could have done it with shorter-range rockets or a car bomb or targeted assassinations, things like that. They didn't do that because, like you said, 
They did not want President Trump to have to, you know, spin the wheel of woe and decide what the next most painful thing he was going to do to them would be. Oh, that would have been ugly. Let's uh, shift gears to talk about another thing that happened in Iran. And I don't want to get into conspiracy theories, but uh, a Ukrainian international airliner flying uh, out of Tehran Airport to Kiev crashed on takeoff. There is footage on the Internet. And again, take that for what it's worth, uh, showing a flaming aircraft uh, crashing into the ground. Uh, The Iranians have said they are not giving the black box to Boeing. They immediately announced it was a engine malfunction. Ukraine said, hey, we are stopping flights out of uh, uh, out of Tehran as of now. My thought is there is a distinct possibility this was an accidental shoot down by some over eager Iranian. What do you think? You know, Kurt, when it first happened. And they announced both Ukraine and Iran came out with a statement saying, we don't think this is terrorism. We don't think this is, you know, a military act of any kind. It's just, you know, an unfortunate mechanical malfunction. And, you know, God, you know, saved the the people who died there. Um, Then the Ukrainians pulled their statement back. Now that says something. And now they're saying their pilots were well trained and they they find it highly unlikely they would have made a, a mistake like that. And the idea that planes go flamingly crashing into the ground is not the way it happens anymore. So I'm like you. I, I rarely believe conspiracy theories work, but it could very easily have been, like you said, a guy who's sitting there and, and all of a sudden they freak out and they think it's incoming and boom, you know, they, they pull the trigger. Uh, I, I, hopefully this this resolves in a better way and, and we feel for the, the families of people who died. Terrible, but terrible. this needs to be uh, examined very closely. And we all know we can't trust a thing that the mullahs say about this. Uh, absolutely not. What do you think comes next? I think uh, President Trump, like you said, is, is not going to take a victory lap because there is no victory here. What we've done is we walked back from, if not a precipice for us, a precipice for them. You know, Iran was the one who wanted a war with the United States least. Nobody wanted one. Trump didn't want one. The American people don't want one. But Iran definitely didn't want one because they're the ones who would have come out of it the worst. So President Trump can say, okay, get back in your corner. You know, and and Iran's got a ton of problems to deal with. They're, They're running out of money at home. Their people are protesting. There's protests against them in Iraq. There's uh, difficulties in Lebanon. They've got so many things going on bad that they don't need us actively crushing them. So I think we can we can push back a little bit now and get back to the economic sanctions. And I think some of those will be the focus of what President Trump says going forward. I think so. And I'd like to add that we need to support the Persian people in overthrowing these tyrants. Forty years of Jimmy Carter's folly is too much. This is Kurt Schlichter, guest hosting on the Hugh Hewitt Radio Show. We'll be right back.